With a technology as unpredictable and powerful as drones, especially FPV drones, it is highly recommended that you take the correct measures to plan out your flight in order to ensure the success of your mission and the safety of others as well as yourself. But sometimes we don't always have that luxury when we're trying to grab that last shot before the sun sets or we're in a location we'll never get to be at again. Okay, we only got one shot at this. So in today's video, we're going to show you three ways you can spend less time planning, get up in the air faster, and still get amazing cinematic FPV shots. The first tip I have for you guys in getting cinematic amazing shots in less time is going to be to think of the purpose of your flight before you take off. Are you shooting a YouTube video? Are you shooting a short for Instagram Reels or for TikTok? Or is it a commercial? Just by asking yourself this one question before you fly, it can make your video way better because now you understand why you're filming. It's kind of like if you went out and you started filming for no reason, you don't know what you were doing. I've done that when I began doing video. I would just take my camera outside, I'd film everything. Hey guys, we just got off a 12 hour flight from Tokyo. It's <laughs> Why is it so fucking right gross? And I come back into the editing room and there'd just be this pile of footage I don't even know what to do with and know where to start. And I was able to spend a lot less time editing and trying to put my video together after the fact when I knew what I was shooting for. If I'm shooting for a tech reviewer, for example, which I've had before, and their video is going on YouTube primarily, it's a YouTube video, so it's actually 16 by nine. It's this full range. On the other hand, if I'm shooting for one of my own TikToks or an Instagram reel, I know for a fact because the phone is vertical, I'm gonna have a lot less space to frame my shot. So in that case, it's actually better to frame the shots more in the center. Understanding and knowing these details ahead of time is going to be a lot of help when you actually get into the editing room. Clarity will improve your confidence and knowing the purpose of your flight is going to help a ton. Second tip I have for you guys is to choose points of interest. When I get to a new location or environment and I didn't have the chance to see it ahead of time, any videos or pictures or information, I'll do what I can to get acquainted as quick as possible. Whether this means walking around the environment, taking note of what is around, it's trees, buildings, roads. The cool thing about FPV drones being drones is because we literally have the ability to go from a bird's eye view. For this last video with Anuj, I had no idea what to expect. I had never flown in these locations before, so I took some time to really just absorb each spot. I tried to take note of what buildings were around the beach, right? What cliffs and ridges did I have to play with in my shots? Because I took the time to assess my environment and take a look around in the goggles and in real life before I flew, I was able to take maximum advantage of a lot of these locations. And most importantly, I was able to not crash. Because the more time you take to actually survey and take a look at what is in the way, what you can use, the more time you're actually taking to make sure you don't crash into anything randomly. Okay, here we go. Whoa. That's my second tip is to make sure that you choose and analyze your environment and points of interest. My third and final tip on how you can get better FPV shots in less time is to choose a flight path based on tech. What is tech, you may ask? Let me go through it with you one by one. T is for timing. Timing is crucial for a multitude of reasons in FPV. One of the most obvious being battery packs just don't last that long in FPV. You get like five minutes if you're lucky. And then things get even more complicated when you add something else to the mix. When you're trying to get timing with a subject, for example. Oops. Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna have you do that one more time. Sorry. For example, when I was filming this video with Anuj, I found a couple of sisters who were taking photos. And so I asked them if one of them could model for me. Would you guys actually be interested in being a, a subject for one of our drone shots? Yes. Yeah? Cool. Did, uh, did he ask you yet? No, dude, oh, we he's offer. lost. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get him now, all right? But I wanted her to run to the cliffside while I was flying past her or around her. And once she got to the cliffside, I wanted to dive down the cliff. Okay. Another reason why timing is so important for FPV and for filmmaking is because, especially if you're in the world of social media or content or commercials, people's attention spans are really small and they're getting smaller every single day. If you already know your purpose of your flight and you know the points of interest you wanna hit in your video, then you can make your video as succinct as possible. The E in tech stands for energy. And when I mean energy, I don't mean just going all over the place and bouncing off the walls. That is quite easy to do with FPV. Sometimes that works, especially when you're chasing cars, you're doing faster movements. But if you're filming indoors, if you're filming with a CineWhoop, if you're doing a tour of a smaller space, you wanna make sure to control that energy and understand what the context of the situation is. It goes back to purpose, right? Because if you're filming a real estate video, then you don't want to fly through it in three seconds. You want to angle your camera level a little bit lower and you want to cruise through it, making sure that your viewers have a proper grasp of the situation and it matches the context. And then the C of tech stands for coherence. When you are filming, you want to make sure that your videos are legible. 
I believe some of the struggles you have to overcome when coming from the world of racing or freestyle, you're flying around and you're trying to make cool movements. And some of these flips can actually be very disorienting for viewers. And you have to understand that when you're making cinematic videos. You want to capture a subject. You want to tell a story. That story may not call for you doing a Rubik's Cube in the middle of it. Maybe it will, but a lot of the times you want to make sure that your video is coherent. So you want to avoid any jittery, jarring movements that could potentially take away from the video because you want your viewers to watch until the very end. If you actually lower your rates in beta flights, that can actually help you make more smooth movements in your sticks without trying too hard. This is why Real Steady for GoPro is actually really helpful because a lot of those jitters that come from the wind or from a untuned quad can be smoothed out by the software. Real Steady is really great for cinematic flights. And so if you're curious about Real Steady, I have a video about that you can take a look at over there. And so to recap on three things you can do to get more cinematic shots in less time is to one, think of the purpose of the flights. Two, choose your points of interest. And three, remember tech, timing, energy, and coherence. And to sum up all of these tips into one lesson, it's to follow the action. There's a really great video by this YouTube channel called Every Frame a Painting, and it talks about how Jackie Chan, coming from the martial arts world, is able to do so well in filmmaking. And despite all of these crazy, radical, super hard to follow action movements that he coordinates, he understands one basic rule, which is to follow the action. And so the same principle applies to pretty much any level of filmmaking. Whether you're flying at 90 miles per hour with FPV, or you're just doing handheld video on your camera, the same principle applies. Are you following the action? Thank you guys for watching. This has been Kai from Vertigo Vision. If you want to learn more about FPV and filmmaking, I recommend you check out these two videos right here. And I hope you have an amazing day. Keep flying and have a great one. Then you're going to be able to make sure that your flight is as gravitable, brev, brevity-ish, uh, clear as possible. Okay, one more time.